Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that as we come into your presence and sit at your feet, you'll feed us with your word. Hallelujah. Feed us till we want no more, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pour into us living water. Feed us, hallelujah, with the bread of life. Hallelujah. Give us instruction, directions, corrections, Father God. Hallelujah. That will cause us to enter into a new and living way. Hallelujah. The way of the believer, hallelujah, is above. Teach us how to live above the common fray of everyday negativity. Hallelujah. And this world's poverty, gravity, hypocrisy that tries to pull us down daily. Hallelujah. Cause us to learn to live above. To live above the circumstances. Hallelujah. To live above sea level. To live above what we can see. Hallelujah. And walk. Hallelujah. By faith and not by sight. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. That you are the God that answers prayer. You're the God that sees and knows and cares. Hallelujah. So if there's something that we sought for, asked for, and it didn't come to pass, it's only because, hallelujah, you have something better for us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. Yes, that you know the end. Hallelujah. Before the beginning. Your Alpha Omega. Beginning, end, first, last. Hallelujah. Author, finisher, authorizer, and finalizer of our faith. Hallelujah. Therefore, you make it so we will reach an expected end if we just walk by faith. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Familiar verse of scripture, amen. Hallelujah. But I love how God uses the Old Testament as a teaching tool to show us, hallelujah, something about his grace and his favor, hallelujah, his mercy and his love that we can experience in the new covenant, amen. Hallelujah. 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 15 through 20. I'll read out loud. I ask that you please follow along with me. Amen. By the way, we're still in due season. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We still believe God is going to do everything he said he's going to do. Hallelujah. We're still in due season. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 15 through 20 says this, And the Lord said unto him, talking about Elijah, amen. We've got two people here for those who may not be familiar with the scripture. Elijah and Elisha, amen. Elijah is the prophet, hallelujah, who's in office. And Elisha is his protege that will eventually take his place and ask for a double portion of his anointing. Amen. And the Lord said unto him, Elijah, go, ret return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hezial to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shephat, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Just to give you a backdrop, Elijah is being replaced because after his showdown with the 450 false prophets of Baal. Uh, um, Jezebel says she was going to come and decapitate him. And he went running. He hid under a juniper tree, became depressed, discouraged, and said, I'm the only person that's serving the Lord. <laughs> And God had to tell him, I got thousands of people that are serving you, serving me. And since you no longer believe me, you go ahead and anoint Azil to be king over Syria, anoint Jehu to be king over uh, Judah, Israel, 
and anoint Elisha to take your place. And this is what it says. So he departed hence and found Elisha, the son of Jephthah, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelfth and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? Elijah and Elisha had not communicated to this point. And Elijah came up and put his mantle upon Elisha. And Elisha was ready to drop his 12 yoke of oxen, which is probably, you know, like a, a several tractors at that time. He had money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there was something that happened there that he desired more than money. And so he was said, I'll follow you. And Elisha said, Elijah said, what have I done to you? But somehow Elisha knew the call that had been placed on him at that moment. The title of today's message is, You'll Know It When You See It. Yes, you'll know it when you see it. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. There's something about the call, the mantle, the mission, the motivation, the purpose, the plan that God places within you that it's sometimes it sometimes doesn't have a reference point in your mind as to what it's supposed to be. Because it's something you've never seen before. It's something that you've not seen anybody else do. But when you see something that's similar to it there'll be something that'll move and leap inside of you to say that's what I am supposed to do amen and as you believe in God for due season there are times when you don't know exactly what to do next there are times when you don't know exactly what you're waiting for but you know you're waiting for God to do something and you'll know it when you see it Amen? Amen? Amen. And so because there's some things that can't be taught like information but can only be caught by revelation, by exposure, you need to do something that I mentioned in my book. You got to extend your outer circle and tighten your inner circle. Amen? Have you ever gotten to a point where you felt like you were just going through the motions? Amen. You got to extend your outer circle. Amen. Hallelujah. Because who, how, you don't know where you're going to find the inspiration that God has for you. But I'll tell you, you probably won't find it sitting in your house in front of your video game. You probably won't find it just doing the everyday routine, day to day. You gotta stretch yourself if you wanna be exposed to something new by which God will show you what it is he wants you to do. You know, it goes against human nature to stretch yourself oftentimes. It's uncomfortable, amen, to go into unfamiliar situations. But if you're gonna, see something different you have to be exposed to something that uh, that'll give you an aha moment and it'll give you something by which you say that's that's what it is that's what i'm supposed to do you got to stretch yourself by extending your outer circle do something different amen i challenge you go to places that you thought you couldn't afford. Go do some things that aren't normally what you do because those things will stretch you. I'm reminded back when I was in the Army. I was U.S. Army Infantry, 11 Mike. And as a U.S. Army Infantryman, we're, you know, we were trained to do certain things. And 
we were selected, some of us were selected to be what was called combat lifesavers, mm -hmm. which was if the medic was taken out, it was then our job to be a substitute for the medic. So we learned how to start IVs, we learned how to splint, you know, fractures, we learned how to patch sucking chest wounds and all the different things that we would, might encounter on the battlefield. But something happened when I was exposed to the medical field as opposed to being an infantryman. And when I went from learning how to kill people to learn how to heal people, there was something that stirred up in me and said, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It was when I was exposed to something different, to something new. So I challenge you, amen, to expose yourself to something new. Stretch yourself and see what God will show you. You'll know, you'll know it when you see it. That that's, that's what God was trying to show me. Amen? I told you, I gave you three types of people types when I was talking about Extending your outer circle and tightening your inner circle. I talked about Jethro, Aaron and her, and Joshua. But I like the example here of Elijah and Elisha, where Elisha didn't really even know he was looking for something different. Mm -hmm. He had a job. He had an occupation. He had an inheritance that his parents were looking to give him in a company or a business. Amen. This wasn't a one, you know, a one acre farm. This was a family business that was being hand down and been prepped for a lifeship. But there was there had to be something that was lacking. Something that was missing. For when the prophet came and just put his mantle on him he dropped everything and said I'll follow you the Bible says he took the oxen and boiled them he took the yokes and burnt them in other words he was saying I'm not coming back to this I know where I'm supposed to go I know what I'm supposed to do I know because I saw it in you you got to expose yourself to different things, something new, so God can show you the things that he has planned for you. Amen? Amen. In 1 Kings chapter 10, 1 Kings chapter 10, it tells a story of a woman by the name of the Queen of Sheba, and she came to Israel because she heard of the fame of Solomon. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that when she came and met Solomon, she asked him a bunch of hard questions. And I don't believe she was playing Jeopardy. I believe she came there in search, seeking what it was that was the next level of kingly or royal ministry that she was supposed to go to. And the only way she would know how to do things better than how she'd been doing it is for her to go and see. And the Bible says that when she saw Solomon, she wasn't disappointed. She saw in Solomon's court the even the ministers, the help Everybody was dressed right, dressed and clean and sharp. Amen. There was a level of excellence in his ministry, in his kingdom that she wanted to emulate and imitate. Amen. I can remember back when we were in Texas, there was something about the Christian house of prayer. And when I saw the excellence of the a ministry and the things that they were, that were there, there was something that had made me made me know this is what I want our church to look like. This is what I want our ministry to be patterned after. Amen. It was some I knew it when I saw it. And you gotta find something that gives you something to reach for and strive for to reach another level of excellence. 
Don't get satisfied where you are. Amen? Amen. Don't get satisfied where you are. We just had a staff meeting at work. And they were saying that they were going to change the um, grading system. And, you know, they said that so the grading system, what did they say? Objective met would be the new normal. Now, you used to be outstanding, highly satisfactory. In my mind, if they're too above it, that's like getting a C. You're telling me that this is okay. Now, I'm not okay with just being okay. I want to strive to be more, to do better, to be greater than I am before. I always want to do more. I always want to stretch myself. So I'm always looking for something that will cause me to give me a goal to strive for to say that's what I should be doing. Mm. Don't get satisfied with where you are. Let's go to Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. So you got to surround yourself with people of precious like faith and people that are doing what it is you believe you're supposed to do. Amen. So that you can look and glean and see how can I do what I do better? What is it that God is calling me to do? What is it that God is provoking me to reach for? Amen. Hallelujah. Because some things you don't know how to do them because you haven't seen it yet. Mm. You got to expose yourself to something new. Amen. So you'll know when you see it what God is provoking you to do. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 35. It says this And the angel answered and said unto Mary, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. See, Elizabeth, if you're familiar with the story, was impregnated at an old age, both she and Zachariah were old, to the point that when the angel told Zachariah that it was about to happen, he couldn't believe it. The angel had to shut his mouth so he wouldn't keep speaking against the very thing that God was trying to bless him with. And Elizabeth, the Bible says, had hid herself for five months, secluded alone and we can gather from the text that although she was five months into her pregnancy the baby was moving and sometimes sometimes the thing that we're believing God for the vision the dream the goal sometimes it can seem like that when we've not extended our outer circle and tightened our inner circle, maybe we've secluded ourselves with no one to encourage us, no one to provoke us. It can seem like the baby is not moving. I don't know if this thing is alive or not. 
But it was when Elizabeth was exposed to Mary that the baby leaped inside of her. Amen? And something that, you know, I, I think we get the idea, though, when we talk about extending your outer circle and, re, you know, finding somebody that you can pattern after and that'll provoke you. We think of somebody older. But here we see Mary was younger and wasn't even as far along in her pregnancy as Elizabeth was. See, sometimes exposing yourself to somebody new might mean that you need to take somebody under your wing. And the very thing that God has called you to do as you pour into and provoke and encourage somebody else, they'll turn around and do the same thing for you. Yeah. It'll put a new fire in your bosom. It'll cause your baby to leap, amen? It'll cause the vision that's in you to come alive again, amen? If you spend time with somebody that still has a zeal and still has an excitement for what God has called them to do, yeah. amen? Amen. Hey man, when you're by yourself, sometimes you can get stale, stagnant, discouraged because you haven't seen anything move. Jesus. You got to bring people into your intimacy that will provoke you to keep on believing. Amen. Hallelujah. That will have a new excitement and zeal and may even have a new way of doing something that you've been doing an old way and you'll know it when you see it. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what I've been missing. God wants you to stay encouraged in what it is he called you to do. Amen. Because your season is due. Don't grow weary in well doing. You're going to reap if you faint not. So in order to keep from growing weary in well doing, hallelujah, stretch yourself. Expose yourself to some things that are new, hallelujah, so God can provoke you. And Empty yourself. Take what you learned and pour it into somebody else. Hallelujah. So that their fire and their zeal can ignite you and cause what's been dormant in you to leap again. Your season is due. Your season is due. And the thing that's been missing, the missing piece, you'll know it when you see it. But you won't see it until you expose yourself to something new and cause yourself to be stretched beyond your comfort zone. Amen? Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. We thank you and praise you, Heavenly Father, for new ideas, for classes that will be taken, for new business ventures that will be launched, Father God, for different things that people are going to stretch themselves to do as they get out of their little box of comfort and their own little seclusion of what they've been doing. Father God, I thank you that we all have a whole lot more living to do. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God, hallelujah, that you're going to release, hallelujah, life and life more abundantly, Father God, when we get out of the rut and the routine of just regular life, hallelujah, and believe you for Zoe life, hallelujah, that'll stretch beyond the borders of what we've been doing. 
Hallelujah. Father God, we ask that you extend the curtains of our mind. Hallelujah. To believe more, to expect more, to imagine more. Hallelujah. And there's some things that we'll be exposed to. Hallelujah. That will cause us to know that that's what it is that I've been wanting to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Extend the cords. Strengthen the stakes. Get us ready, hallelujah, for an expansion in our life, hallelujah, to go beyond where we are. Because where we are is not all that you have for us. You know the thoughts that you think toward us. Thoughts of good, not evil, to give us an expected end. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. That there's so much more in store. Hallelujah. For our life. Hallelujah. We won't grow stagnant. We won't grow stale. Hallelujah. We won't grow cold in our soul. Hallelujah. And start to give up on the very thing that you placed within us. Cause, hallelujah, the, the vision that's within us to leap again. Hallelujah. Cause the fire in our bones to be ignited again. Hallelujah. Don't let us go stale, Father God. Hallelujah. But provoke us, push us, pull us into what you have for us. Hallelujah. And thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we will not give up on believing. Hallelujah. We'll keep on believing you for more. Hallelujah. Because you are limitless. You are boundless. You are endless. Hallelujah. Therefore, we will not put a cap on you. Hallelujah. Your word says that the children of Israel limited the Holy One of Israel when they started to wonder can God mm. do this Jesus. we reverse the curse right now and we say God can God can God can hallelujah nothing is impossible for you and therefore nothing is impossible for us the sky is not the limit. Hallelujah. But from this moment forward, hallelujah, even as Jesus said, we'll see heaven open. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And the angels of God ascending and descending upon us. Hallelujah. As we believe you for more, expecting more. Hallelujah. Always looking to see what is it that you have for me. And we'll know it when we see it. Hallelujah. We'll know it when we see it. Hallelujah. Because by revelation, you'll cause it to come alive within us. Hallelujah. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Comfort is complacency is stagnancy right and nothing's growing nothing's happening and how do you stay encouraged to continue when you see nothing changing nothing growing right nothing happening gotcha. you have to grow in order to continue mm -hmm. um, otherwise you become stale stagnant and obsolete mm -hmm. right. what do you say to those people who because they're thinking like I tried one time I tried multiple times you know and it didn't happen and I fell what do you say to those people well one Failure is never final right. until you quit. Mm -hmm. I believe this wholeheartedly. That God is the God that opens doors and no man can shut and right. shuts doors and no man can open. Mm -hmm. So even a shut door right. is direction Get toward yeah. into what you're supposed to be doing. It's direction into better. Exactly. So there really you can't fail. Exactly. That's part of the that's part of life. Absolutely. You know, nobody nobody I know <laughs> gets everything right the first time. All right. And if they say they do. They lie. They lie. <laughs> and when you think about that, you know that any failure has to be just a detour right. or just a delay mm -hmm. or just a training tool that was necessary 
to prepare you for what was really on the horizon for you. Absolutely. Nothing, ne you, ne failure is never final. Absolutely. That all we are assigned to do is continue mm -hmm. in the race that God gave to us. Mm -hmm. And doing what God tells you to do is success. Mm -hmm. It can't be compared to somebody else. Right. It can't be measured in dollars, cents, numbers, mm -hmm. acres. It's did you do what God told you to do? Right. That's success. That's success. Absolutely. God, the Bible says this. Noah, Job, and Daniel. Either is it. Dan it was Daniel. It said these three didn't win anybody mm -hmm. that's what it said but they were preachers of righteousness right our success is not measured in an objective mm -hmm. our success is measured in did we continue absolutely did we do the will are we finishing the work mm -hmm. are we continuing what god told us to do absolutely absolutely and so that's what i hope to do i hope to encourage people whatever it is that you feel like god told you to do stay with it don't quit it continue because mm -hmm. god will be glorified in the end absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. heavenly father we thank you and praise you we thank you and praise you heavenly father for glass ceilings being removed mm -hmm. barriers falling down horizons being broadened tents being enlarged stakes being spread out cords being strengthened father god people realizing at this point that where they are is not their destiny nor their destination. Mm -hmm. And all they need to do to get to what you have for them is continue.